Good morning, good, good afternoon, everybody. The title of my presentation is Dual Barrier Magnetic Tunnel Junction Based Cryogenic Spin Transfer Torque Magnetic Rams. This is the outline of my presentation. I will start with a brief introduction and background. Then we will see the basics on double barrier magnetic tunnel junction and the double MTJ um, uh, operating at, at cryogenic temperatures. Then we will see the impact of operating at cryogenic temperatures, at the circuit and memory architecture level. Finally, the conclusions. So let's start with the introduction and motivation. Here we can see the classical memory hierarchy in which due to technological scaling, uh, it presents challenges in terms of speed and energy. To deal with this, a promising alternative is the use of spintronic based memories, in other words, MRAM, that present uh, key features like high, high density of a DRAM, high speed and low power of an SRAM, the non-volatility of a flash, and the easy integration way in, with, with the CMOS process. Now, let's see the MRAM in today's applications. The industrial and automotive in 2016 and the data center storage in, the, in 2018 are the early adopters of the MRAM technology. Note, as we are going towards uh, the core, the overall design complexity increases, and even more if we are considering caches operating at cryogenic temperatures. Uh, okay, let's see a brief insight of spin transfer torque magnetic rams for cryogenic non-volatile cache applications. A recent study has experimentally demonstrated reliable nanosecond pulse switching of nanoscale perpendicular magnetic tunnel junction uh, devices at cryogenic temperatures down to 4 Kelvin. Based on this insight, another work evaluates the spin transfer torque based on single barrier MTJ at cryogenic temperatures and demonstrates that they are competitive solutions for medium to large memory sizes. However, uh, due to the increased switching current at lower temperatures, small memory sizes are penalized in terms of energy and latency for write operation. A feasible solution to deal with the above issue is uh, to replace the conventional single MTJ with double barrier MTJ devices that have two reference layers. Now let's uh, move on to the basics on double barrier magnetic tunnel junction devices. Uh, for the sake of clarity, uh, I'm also considering the single barrier MTJ, both single barrier and uh, and double um, MTJs are composed of reference layer and free layer. In the case of the double MTJ, we have two reference layers. And um, now, according to the magnetization orientation of the free layer with respect to the reference layer in the case of the single MTJ and with, and with respect to the reference layer top in the case of the double MTJ, we have two stable states, the high resistance state and the low resistance state. In the case of the double barrier, Thanks to the presence of the two reference layer, the, the total torque acting um, on the free layer uh, is, in, is enhanced. Uh, therefore, uh, we have a lower switching current. However, due to the presence of the two oxide barriers, we have an increase um, in the resistance and a degradation of the tunnel magnetoresistance resistance ratio, which is, by the way, the readout signal of our devices. Now, let's move on to um, uh, the double MTJ operating at cryogenic temperatures. Here, I'm showing the double MTJ parameters at 300 Kelvin. Note that the properties such as the resistance area product, the spin polarization factor, the saturation magnetization, the Gilbert damping coefficient, and the interfacial perpendicular and isotropic constant were extracted from experimental data, as reported uh, here at the bottom. Moreover, note that the spin polarization factor, MS, and the interfacial perpendicular and anisotropic con uh, constant can be modeled um, by the following laws. Um, where the zero Kelvin values re reported here uh, are set to reach the 300 Kelvin values um, as reported here in the, in the table. That being said, uh, let's see these double MTJ temperature dependence parameters. So here, the spin polarization factor, the saturation magnetization, and the interfacial perpendicular anisotropic constant uh, increase with decreasing temperature. 
Moreover, we, ha um, we have um, also the following double MTJ temperature dependent characteristics. Here, the tunnel magnetoresistance resistance ratio increases as temperature decreases. This is mainly due to the increase of the spin polarization factor as shown in the previous slide. Uh, therefore, we have a more reliable reading operation at cryogenic temperatures. This also leads to an increase of the high resistance state at lower temperatures, while low resistance state uh, is almost independent of temperature. Moreover, we have an increase of the thermal stability factor, which leads to an improved data retention time of the device. However, uh, we also have an increase of the, uh, of the critical current. Now, let's see the switching behavior of the double MTJ at, at cryogenic temperatures. In terms of right pulse width, TP, that assures um, uh, a right error rate of 10 minus 7. Um, which is the probability of right error when we are doing a right op operation in the device. Here, the right pulse width, um, we have uh, this as function of the right current and the right voltage for low to high and high to low transitions. Um, all these results show an increase in the right pools for a given bias, as we can see here. This is due to the increase of both the, the critical current and the thermal stability factor. So correspondingly, when moving from 300 Kelvin to 77 Kelvin, as we can see here, um, uh, both the right current and the right voltage needs, uh, need to be increased for a fixed uh, right pulse width, thus translated into an energy penalty for cryogenic operations. Note that uh, the more significant penalty for the high uh, to low transition can be uh, explained uh, uh, by the increase of the high resistance state at, at lower temperatures, as, as shown in the previous slides. Uh, finally, let's see the impact of operating at cryogenic temperatures at the circuit and memory architecture level. Uh, this is the cross-layer simulation framework considered in our work. Uh, we use a memory architecture modeling tool, which was exhaustively calibrated um, with the technology parameters and the vital characteristics for the target temperature. Note, all these input parameters um, have been done by considering, uh, by considering a cryogenic PDK, which was calibrated under silicon measurements uh, down to 77 Kelvin. For the sake of comparison, we have also simulated the conventional six transistor SRAM under the same conditions. Starting with the circuit level analysis at 77 Kelvin, we considered uh, this, this type of uh, bit cell, uh, which is built by a double MTJ device and an access transistor. Uh, here we are considering the cryogenic PDK. We have done Mo Monte Carlo simulations for the write and read operations. In the case of the write operation, here is shown the statistical distribution of the write pools referred, referred to the um, worst case switching transition for the target write pools width. Uh, of 10 minus 9. Note, uh, here is considered the six sigma values. On the other hand, for the read operation, we are using conventional read, uh, read circuit in which a read current is sent from the bit line uh, to the source line, so then the bit line or the bit cell voltage is measured. Here in the read operation, the read current ensures a low read, read disturbance rate of 10 minus 9. The read disturbance rate is the probability of flipping a bit when we are doing a reading operation. So, well, by measuring the bit line voltage, we have two cases, the, the, um, the low and high resistance states, and these are the distributions. Uh, so, in summary, all these Monte Carlo results uh, uh, are used as input um, into the memory architecture modeling tool. Now, let's move uh, to the architecture level analysis. First, 
I'm here showing the STTD MRAM versus SRAM results in terms of latency under read and write accesses for different memory sizes at 77 Kelvin. Note, all these results are, no are normalized to conventional six transistor SRAM. Uh, STT MRAM exhibits a penalty in performance in the considered, re in, in the considered uh, range um, of memory capacity. However, uh, this penalty is reduced as the memory size increases, uh, mainly due to the higher interconnection complexity um, presented in the, in the six transistor SRAM. Now, in comparison to the SRAM counterpart, the read latency of a 64 kilobyte uh, STT MRAM is slightly larger. While for higher sizes, let's say two megabytes, the latency is smaller. Uh, also, uh, the spin transfer torque SRAM is slower under read access. Although such penalty uh, in terms of write latency um, uh, reduces at larger sizes, as we can see here. Now, let's see uh, the energy results of the spin transfer torque MRAM versus the SRAM. So compared to the conventional SRAM, the spin transfer torque MRAM is more energy efficient under read access. Uh, the right energy operation of the spin transfer torque MRAM exhibits a trend like uh, the right latency uh, here, the STT MRAM uh, is more energy efficient on the right axis than the, than the conventional SRAM for largest sizes only. Moreover, we have also considered the memory leakage and it is found to be 98% less than the six transistor SRAM. We finally uh, arrive um, to, the, uh, to, the final, to, to our last slide the conclusions. So, uh, this work investiga uh, investigates the, um, the double MTJ-based spin transfer torque MRAM as a memory solution for cryogenic ap applications. In particular, we are considering uh, the 77 Kelvin. Uh, we have also exploited a, a memory architecture estimation tool, which was um, exhaustively calibrated uh, um, with, um, with electrical simulations that consider, uh, that consider 65 nanometer CMOS technology fully characterized at cryogenic temperatures, along uh, with the double MTJ very log A based compact model, uh, which uh, describes uh, the temperature dependent characteristics of our double MTJ uh, parameters. Uh, compared to the standard, as main message, uh, as a main result of our analysis, compared uh, co and comparing to the standard two megabyte uh, six transistor SRAM operating at 77 Kelvin, the double MTJ based spin transfer torque MRAM solution allows energy savings by about 52% uh, and 38% for read and write operations, respectively. This is achieved uh, while also assuring uh, lower leakage and a smaller on-chip area. Uh, and the, at the only cost of, of uh, write access time. And uh, based on these results, uh, we say that the double MTJ based at the spin transfer torque MRAM is a note worthy candidate for non-volatile cryogenic memories. Uh, this is all, and thank you for your attention.